About six months ago, I took delivery of this 2023 Model X Plaid. It was an amazing experience. I even got the red carpet delivery treatment from my local Tesla delivery center. And I was able to get this car when prices dipped to the lowest they'd been in quite some time. But now, six months later, I've got the Model X Plaid and some things have changed. We're seeing some all new technology with the Tesla Cybertruck. There is more competition on the road for this than ever before. And I'm sort of left asking the question, is the Model X worth it in 2024? Are the Falcon Wing doors more trouble than they're worth? Is the performance of this car still really worth its price? And overall, when you look at the Tesla lineup and especially the Model Y, is this car worth nearly $100,000 as it stands in 2024? It's been six months and I've got a lot to say. Simply put, after living with this car, I wanna talk about the pros and the cons and about 10 or so things I wish I knew before I took delivery. There are so many things I absolutely love about the Model X, but also some things that I absolutely hate. So if you're a potential owner looking to buy this car, stay tuned because I've got some things you got to know. And also, if you own a Model X, even a newer or an older Model X, let me know down below if you think I'm crazy or if you think I'm spot on. Let's talk about the Model X and whether it's worth it or not as a good buy in 2024. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the looks of this car. Obviously the most iconic thing you're going to notice here right off the bat are those Falcon wing doors, but when the doors are closed, it starts to look a little bit different and some people just might not like the look. It's a little bit more egg-like than some might like. And also, I mean, many call it the Tesla minivan because that's kind of what it is. You're getting a lot of room in here for cargo and passengers, but also at the same time, it's looking a bit, um, more bold in a way than some people might like. I happen to like the way the Model X looks. I especially love the ultra red paint color offering that they've got. This is what I have here on mine. I think uh, these are extra charges now, but when I got this car, it was a free option. I absolutely love it. I would pay whatever, I think it's $2,500, maybe $3,000 for the ultra red. I think it looks fantastic. And this is applied. You'll notice the red brake calipers, uh, though everything I'm gonna say in this video basically applies to both the long range and the plaid models here. Uh, but I absolutely love the red, uh, ultra red color here. And the design of the car, while it hasn't uh, really changed all that much over the years, I still think looks pretty good. And of course, we're gonna talk about those doors more in a moment, but just to sort of give you a bit of a walk around of what the car looks like, this is how it is in 2024. Like I said, it hasn't changed all that much. Uh, you've got the spoiler here on the back that doesn't move uh, or uh, activated uh, as it was in older models. And yeah, this is the look of the Model X. You either love it or hate it, but this is what it is. But while this car is a bit larger than some might like, one of the big benefits of that, like I alluded to earlier, is lots and lots of space. I am uh, currently packing up to move here, so the front of my car has some storage items here, but as you can see, you've got a lot of space here in the front. You could even fit a Model Y or a mini Model Y up here, uh, but lots of space here in the front. You've got a lot of space in the back as well, which I'll show you. Though the one thing I will say, for the price point of this car being nearly $100,000, the fact that the front is not powered still is sort of crazy to me. I understand Tesla's trying to cut costs, but this is kind of annoying. I know if you notice, I've got my plaid a little badging down there. This is from Tesla Emblems. It's a uh, little decal vinyl wrap here. I'll leave a link to that down below if you're interested. Uh, but that is sort of making up the frunk of the Model X. And then coming around to the trunk area, this is the six seat configuration, which I'll talk more about in a moment. Uh, but just to sort of show you, if you have all the seats in the upward position, how much space do you have in the trunk? And here you go. Here's a little look at what that looks like. If you've got a Costco run to make, or you've got groceries, you basically have a little storage cavity right Right here where you can put some things. You've got a little storage uh, area over here, a little net on there to sort of keep things from flying out and going crazy. And then sort of you've got me recenter the camera here. There you go. You've got a bottom portion here, which looks like that. And then this will actually open up to give you even more space here in your sub frunk. So lots of space down here for uh, grocery bags, for backpacks, for gear, whatever it may be. Lots of room down here in your sub frunk and actually a lot of space here, even when these other seats are up, you're still getting a decent amount of space here in the trunk. But then of course, if I was to take these seats and push them down, 
and that's easy. It's easier uh, to push them down than it is to bring them back up. You can see here, you've got a lot of space here in the back. Obviously one of the big issues, or I should say one of the compromises with the six seat configuration with these captain's chairs is that these do not go down. You can actually uh, put them in a more forward facing position, which I'll show you in a moment. But just so you know, one big thing you've got to know about this configuration in general uh, is that uh, those seats don't go down. So this is like the maximum uh, cargo space here you're going to get in the back. Still plenty of space, I'd say equivalent to the Model Y. And of course you've got the frunk and sub trunk area back here as well. Uh, but just to give you an idea, that is the amount of space you're getting in the back. And uh, those seats there especially will not go down unless you go uh, with the bench option, which that does fold flat, but not the six seat configuration. Okay, so now I wanna talk about one area of the car that I've absolutely loved and hated over the last six months, and those are the doors, both the Falcon wing doors and then the other powered doors for the front passenger and the driver's side door. So the Falcon wing doors work as you would expect them to. They open up like so, and the big benefit of this is that not only do they, you know, they do look cool, but it is so easy to get passengers in and out of this car, especially if you've got small children you're going to appreciate just how easy it is to get in and out of Model X. And I can tell you, I speak from experience with someone uh, who has a very squirmy two-year-old getting her in and out of this car seat. And I apologize for the mess back here. You'll sort of see, this is the current lived-in condition of the Model X toys and sweatshirts and all. Having this is so, so nice, especially on rainy days. My wife's appreciating uh, as well that you're getting sort of some rain Sorry about the camera there. The rain is being covered uh, by the door as you're trying to get in, uh, but just trying to get a toddler or any small children into the car is really easy because you're getting so much space to work with because that door is going all the way up unlike any other car on the market. So the one question I get asked all the time about the Falcon wing doors is, aren't you afraid they're going to hit something? And my answer to that is yes and also no. Uh, these doors are, I think, the last new modern Tesla component that have ultrasonic sensors on them. So they've got physical sensors sort of using their ultrasonic magic to make sure objects aren't around that they're going to hit. So when you open the door and I'm standing here, it should know I'm here and not extend. There we go, gonna go over my head that far out. Not the most scientific test, but you sort of get what I mean. They've got sensors built on them so they know how far they can extend out to not hit anything. I've been in tight parking spots. I've been in parking garages where the roof comes down a little low. 98% of the time, the doors have done a phenomenal job and they know their surroundings and don't hit anything. There's been a few close calls that were a little too close to comfort for me. But besides that, they do a great job. And because of those sensors, I'm uh, pretty confident that they are going to open and close and not hit anything around them. Now, one of my favorite parts of making these Tesla Focus videos is showcasing some things to you guys of what you can do to enhance your Tesla experience, add new features, unlock functionality you didn't know existed, and just make it easier to live with your Tesla every single day. And one of the best ways that I love to do all of that, plus so much more, is using the Terry app for the iPhone and also the Apple Watch too. Terry is basically a better version of the Tesla app in every single way. It's gonna supercharge your Tesla experience by giving you super easy access to all the controls you need for your Tesla, all beautifully laid out on one single page, you know, having to dig through menus. And like I mentioned, Terry has got a full-fledged, full-featured companion watch app that lets you control your Tesla right from your wrist and even be able to set your Apple Watch as a Bluetooth key so you can control and drive your Tesla. No need to have your phone or key cards, but just with the Apple Watch on your wrist, Works beautifully, so easy to set up, and really, really cool. Terry is also packed with so many other features like additional reports you can dive into. You can even make your own custom light show from right within the Terry app. You can sort of listen to a song, tap around with the animations uh, you wanna create, and then have this beautiful light show super easily on your Tesla that you made right from Terry. It is super easy and super fun. And personally, I love that Terry is packing full Siri shortcut support here as well, so you can set up automations and different voice commands and even uh, control your Tesla right from your uh, Siri on your Apple device, even the ability to open a door, for example, just by telling Siri to have your Tesla open that door. If you're looking for a really easy way to control your Tesla from your iPhone, from your Apple Watch, and just a really easy app to use that makes controlling your Tesla easy and also gives you advanced features, Terry is the way to go. If you wanna learn more, check it out for yourself and start using it totally for free. 
totally for free, folks. Hit the link right down below to learn more and check it out. And also, if you want to unlock all the premium features, you can use the code Robert, and that'll get you all those premium features for just 20 bucks for the entire year. A really great deal. So again, learn more and check out Terry for yourself right now at the link down below. Okay, so if I love the Falcon Wing doors so much, what is the real negative here you need to know? And really, it's a couple of things. Some people think they're a little, you know, um, flashy for what they might like. They also uh, might be a little bit slower than what people might like as well. But I think the big thing is that there are so many moving parts to make those Falcon Wing doors open and close that it's the biggest point of failure on Model X. And if you've got a component that goes wrong, it can kind of mess up the doors. Also, you'll notice here, uh, sometimes like things aren't always aligned with the Falcon Wing doors just because there are so many moving parts, things are perfect and even, and I've heard that honestly, if the doors work, the unofficial rule of thumb from Tesla owners is just to not to say anything because if you try to have the service center fix it, oftentimes they make it worse. So just keep in mind that as cool as those Falcon Wing doors are, there are so many active components on there that um, they're the biggest point of failure because something after all those opening and closings over the years is, you know, unlikely more likely uh, going to uh, have a malfunction. My bigger issue though with the Model X and one of the most annoying and frustrating things about owning this car is the other automatic doors. Now you'll notice here that if I pop open the door here, it's going to open that much, which isn't what it should be or what it used to be. Because Tesla has been on this cost cutting crusade and they've been removing ultrasonic sensors, the doors only pop out this far because they don't know how far they can open up. In older Model Xs, they, they used to open up all the way because like these doors, they would know their surroundings so they could open up. And the idea was that they would auto present themselves so you could jump in and then get going. Because Tesla removed those sensors on these doors, they only, you know, 100% of the time are going to open up this much, which kind of makes it useless. And then what I've said before is you've really got to fight the motor in the door to open it because you got to fight it because it's not meant to be sort of manual. But because those uh, missing sensors are there, you have no other choice but to manually pull the door open because you can't do anything else. Now, when you get in the car, it is really nice having those power doors that I can simply put my foot on the brake and the door is going to close. And I also have full control over my doors here in the car as well. I can open any door in the car and I can also close any door in the car except for the front because that front is manual. Uh, 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 I won't be able to do that automatically, but every other door I could open, the passenger door if I wanted to, or actually I'm opening the Falcon Wing door. Sorry, I could open the passenger door if I wanted to, and I could close that just from here. Uh, having that is kind of cool. And again, you've got all your options here for door controls, uh, which is nice. And I do like being able to put my foot on the brake and have the door closed. But again, same problem when you open the door, if I press this to open it, again, I'm fighting that motor to be able to get out because it's used to being able to be programmed like the other models to actually open up an appropriate distance. So that is really, really annoying. And on Tesla's flagship vehicle, the fact that those doors don't work or they work worse than the older models is ridiculous. Now, one of the things that I absolutely love about the Model X is that you've got space in this car, lots and lots of space for many passengers and storage as well. Again, I went with the six seat configuration, which I like. These are those captain's chairs. And like I mentioned earlier, if you do want to haul things or if you want an easy way for people to get in those back two chairs, you're able to have a motorized mechanism that'll move that chair forward and back if you need to get back there. So that is sort of nice to have. The seats, of course, are comfortable. You've got your rear entertainment screen back here. You You've got ventilation, you've got plenty of airflow. And again, I'll show you sort of what it looks like if I was to close this door. Hit the wrong button. Sorry, there you go. Door is going to close. And I've got my speaker up here. I've got my full display back here that I can uh, adjust airflow. I can adjust uh, heated seats. I can move uh, that front seat if I needed to get a little bit more room there. I could control my media, like my two-year-old likes Frozen. I've got movies back here I can watch. I've got games I can play. And now with one of the recent Tesla software updates, I can connect uh, two other Bluetooth headphones back here so my rear passengers can listen to their own stuff and not affect the people up front. That is nice. You've got some USB-C ports. Sorry, I didn't mean to turn on the... Uh, AC here. Of course, you've got your full AC control back here. I've also got a couple of USB-C ports. I've got cup holders and yeah, it's just a really nice backseat experience. I've got plenty of room back here. I've got my armrest and it's just really, really nice. Much roomier than what you'd get in a Model Y. And of course, you've got all that glass with that massive 
helicopter like windshield up front. I've got some glass back here as well. Plenty of headroom, uh, feels plenty spacious and is comfortable for long drives. If you're gonna do a road trip with your family, can't go uh, wrong or really can't find any better option than what you'd get in a Model X. All right, jumping inside is where things are going to get good and bad. Honestly, I can tell you like just overall, I love everything that is happening in the Model X's interior. You've of course got that nice big wireless charging area up here. I've got some smudge right there. Uh, you've got uh, carbon fiber in the plaid or wood in the long range. And then you've got a lot of storage space down here. You've got this sort of storage ca uh, cavity here. This opens up to even more space down here. You've got this sort of sliding mechanism for your Sorry for my very pale white leg there. You've got your cup holders and then you've got even more space back here. I've got a little bit of a Spigen tray here that pops out, which I'm not gonna deal with it here. Let's see, there we go. And that even gives you more space. So you've got lots of storage space back here. You've got tons of room and just a really nice center console area with the car. And then you've got the screen. And of course, we're gonna talk about the yoke. Okay, so a couple of things I love about the screen. One, this is a really big screen. It's a 17 inch display, which means you've got tons of room to have anything you want on here, which is really nice. What's also nice is that because you've got a secondary display right here, that's gonna show you your battery percentage, it's gonna show you weather, it's gonna show you your speedometer and stuff like that. That means you've got not only a bigger screen here, but you've got a screen that's way better utilized for more stuff. And that means that you can actually move things around. So if I was to open up like Apple Music, for example, because because this screen is so big, I'm able to move it around. I'm able to have a mini player here if I want to. I'm able to open the settings and uh, move uh, different uh, things. If I do um, the blinker, for example, I've got all this room and space to move it. Uh, you just have not only, again, a bigger screen, but you've got a lot of space to utilize, which I really like. I also really like not only is the screen bigger, but you're able to rotate the screen as well. Or I shouldn't say rotate, but reposition the screen. Sounds like a really dumb idea, but... In practice, the fact that it's motorized and able to go either facing the passenger back in the middle or the driver is really nice because I can tell you this is sort of the default um, you know, position, which is fine, but because I'm mostly in the car by myself when I'm driving, I like to have a position near me and I really, really like it. It just makes it uh, easier to touch and navigate and see. It's a small thing there, but I really do like that here on Model X. Now, in terms of the yoke, well, I'll just leave this to you. Some people love this, some people hate it. I love the yoke, my wife absolutely hates it, um, but I am all in on Tesla's stockless dream, and I think the yoke makes a lot of sense. Of course, you've got all of your buttons here on the steering wheel itself. They're all touch-sensitive buttons, which that is sort of annoying that they don't actually have a physical click. They're just going to have a little bit of haptic feedback. Of course, there is the new yoke, uh, yoke uh, New York, new yoke that's going to move the horn from a digital button into the center here and then replaces that with a camera icon, but I've got the older one for now, but basically the same thing. And the big reason I like the yoke is I find it comfortable for driving. And the big reason I went, went, went for it is that it keeps this screen unencumbered. So you're able to see any information on that screen. Whereas with the round steering wheel, it's going to cut off a good portion of that screen. I know the yoke used to be standard. Now it's an additional cost. I think it's worth it. And I'm a big yoke fan. I'm all on uh, team yoke. And I also don't mind the uh, stocks being moved uh, off of the wheel and then onto the touchscreen as well. I think it's something you get used to and just sort of makes, for me, uh, a, a better driving experience. Now, I will say I would be doing good to a service if I didn't talk about one of the worst parts of the Model X, and that is the sun visors. You've got this massive helicopter-like windshield that goes almost all the way up on the front of the car. It's amazing. You've got great visibility, but that also means that the sun comes in like nothing else. And the included uh, sun visors are awful. My wife absolutely hates this. It's just it's sort of like doing origami. It sort of feels like those old iPad cases. And to get the mirror down, you've got to go like that. It's just a honestly awful experience. And this is very useless for blocking out the sun. It's also kind of hard to reposition because sometimes if the sun is there, you've got to sort of do this thing or bring it back like this. There is really no good uh, setting for it. And especially also if it's not uh, actually clicked in, it starts to rattle, which is kind of annoying. It's awful. If I had to tell you one part of the Model X that I hated, it's the sun visor por portion. I mean, this is is just it's awful. I can't believe the Model X has existed for so long and Tesla hasn't fixed it. Uh, so that is my one critique that is awful about that. You'll definitely have to keep that in mind if you live in sunny climates. Uh, the built-in sun visors are just awful. So keep that in mind. Gorgeous windshield, uh, but not a lot of good uh, options for blocking out that unwanted light. 
Okay, so let me answer the question that I first posed in the first like 60 seconds of the video. Is the Model X worth it in 2024? I think that it is with a couple of caveats. I think that if you look at what's coming with the new Model Y Juniper, it's basically gonna be like a mini Model X because it's gonna get um, the uh, cooled ventilated seats. It's going to get that rear screen. Uh, it's going to get a more comfortable suspension. Obviously this has air suspension, uh, which I also should mention that is really nice. And uh, the ability to sort of uh, automatically adjust that is nice. Um, but uh, that Model Y is going to be bringing a lot of the Model X features and also be significantly less expensive than this car behind me, which definitely is something to keep in mind that if you want a Model X but you're willing to wait about a year to see what happens with the Model Y, that might be sort of worth waiting for to see what's going to happen. The other thing I should say is that the Model X is actually going to be getting a refresh very imminently here in the next couple of months. We should be seeing the very first deliveries of the Model X with the RGB ambient lighting, the new and improved yoke, and also a front bumper camera. Uh, it could be happening by the time this video goes out because I will be sort of on vacation when this video goes out, so maybe some news broke that I didn't know about. But as of right now, it is a rumor and should be coming soon. Uh, having a front bumper camera on here would be really nice. Um, our be ambient lighting. I don't know, I could give or take that. But just so you know, some improvements are coming to the Model X, something to keep in mind. But all in all, six months in, I really like the Model X. I am a little wary of what problems I could see with the Falcon Wing doors, just because I know that is a pain point and an issue. I do think the design while it's good, is a little tired for 2024, and we haven't seen any big redesign in a while, so that would sort of be nice to see. Um, but I do love the technology. I love the dual screens. I love the ventilated seats. I love the air suspension. I love the performance. You're getting so much with the Model X, and it is really nice to have. There are some things that I wish could be fixed, the sun visors and, um, you know, stuff like that, little things. But overall, I'm really happy with this car. Yes, you are paying a premium to have one of Tesla's best experiences. Yes, it would be nice if they could bring some the new Cybertruck features like steer by wire and the 48 volt architecture, which I'm sure they will at some point. But as it stands right now, if you're looking for a Tesla with lots of storage space for passengers and cargo, if you're looking for a really comfortable driving experience, if you're looking for a good amount of technology and a great amount of performance and range, definitely check out the Model X. I've been really happy with it six months in, and it's a car I plan to keep, especially considering the price, for a very long time. So I'm curious, guys, what are your thoughts on the Model X in 2024? Are you thinking about buying a Model X? Do you own a Model X? If you do own a Model X, let me know your thoughts down below as to what you think about your car. And also, if you own a Model Y, tell me why you chose Model Y over Model X. Was it price? Was it the feature set? Was it something else? Let me know down below because I know there's a lot of crossover between Model X customers and Model Y customers. Uh, so let me know down below. Also, just want to give a big thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring and supporting this channel. They have got over 400 artworks in their collection from names you've heard of, Picasso, Warhol, and Banksy. And as the economy right now is up and down and up and down, you're probably looking for a different investment strategy. And one of the best places to actually put your money is in fine art. Billionaires know it, banks know it, and now you can get a piece of the action as well. Masterworks makes it so simple, so easy. Over 900,000 users have signed up. And if you want to get immediate access, skip that wait list. All you've got to do is scan the QR code on screen right there or head to masterworks.art slash Rosenfeld to learn more and get started today. And again, skip that wait list and get immediate access right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am Robert Rosenfeld. Hope you enjoyed this little video here. I'm actually uh, out of town on vacation, moving, it's not really a vacation, but I'm a little busy when this video is going up. So for all my regular channel viewers, I appreciate you guys sticking with me on a little bit of a different video. I should be back to my regularly scheduled content soon, but I figured since it's been six months, I do a little update here on Model X and tell you what I thought. As always, I appreciate you guys watching my stuff. Thank you so much for your support. If you made it to the very end of the video, drop a red emoji down below for in honor of Ultra Red. Let me know you stuck around. And to you guys, the real MVPs, I really do thank you guys so much. Again, I apologize for the little shift in content here. I'm a little busy at the moment, but I will be back very soon. Thank you guys so much for your support. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I'll see you all in the next one.